<laughs> Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Chris. It's good to have you on. I, I don't think you've been on since... Or were you on once? Maybe you've been on once. I think I, you were. Oh, once or twice. Yeah. You know, I across the... Tour. Something yeah. like that, but yeah. not, not by myself. Right. Not just talking artwork and stuff. Not since talking art. In a long time anyway. So yeah. um, you are, you've been doing, what did you say, for like 17 years? Is that what the, at it least 15? Started, <laughs> it started in 2002, like the end of 2002. Right. So, yeah. And so doing I'll put a link. At 17, I took a little break for right. like a year or two, but um, yeah, it's it's been nuts. And just so folks, maybe who are like, sometimes, I don't know if you notice this, but U2 fans sometimes have a tendency to like lock in and think U2 is the entire world. You do actually do other <laughs> things besides U2 art, right? Oh yeah. Like U2 is maybe one sixth of what right. I do. <laughs> like one out of every six days I'm doing something with U2. But <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I have like some paintings in the background that are not U2. Right. And yeah. I did those paintings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you've got a YouTube channel, YouTube, sorry, YouTube channel. YouTube. You've got a YouTube channel <laughs> yeah. as well. And like, I was, I was kind of joking in my notes here that YouTube fans may be surprised to find out that YouTube doesn't even rank anywhere near the top in terms of your popular videos, which oh, again, we're kind of like yeah. YouTube fans are kind of, like we, we're in this little bubble of like, everyone loves YouTube, of course, but obviously people like to learn right. about painting and watercolors right and, right they're, they're probably my least favorite or my <laughs> least popular videos on the channel so if you guys want to get on there and maybe yeah. give me some views that would be amazing <laughs> i've got a couple of bonos and an edge video i think that's it um up there just showing me speed painting each of those two so yeah yeah, yeah it's really cool to watch too for folks who maybe haven't ever seen that anywhere like regardless of whether it's yours or not but just like the the speed painting or the speed you yeah. know watching someone do something quickly which obviously you know is takes a long time but you get to sort of watch that all come to life right in front of your eyes yeah i mean it makes it seem like i know what i'm doing you know <laughs> like every second equals 20 seconds right. so <laughs> a little hesitation whatever you don't see it and it's yeah. just this instant painting starts to happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's how it all works. I assume that's yeah. how it works. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but getting back to you two stuff, you, like we said, you've been doing this since 2002, the, um, and uh, as part of at you two, at you com, obviously. And, um, what was kind of like, it, there was a, someone doing it before for a couple of years, kind of like mm -hmm. as a, a medium to like, obviously add things to the site. When you came on board, um, what was kind of like the, the mission or the, the reason we would do this at, at U2 because it is kind of like a unique thing that obviously yeah. not every U2 fan site does, does something like that. Well, yeah. I mean, I had been a fan of the site since I want to say 97, something like that, 98, when the pop tour was going on. I, I would check in on it. And there was, yeah, a little like one panel drawn cartoon that I think her name is Joe Whitby did. Um, for a few years, and I was like, boy, I wish I could do something like that. That, that would be totally fun. Um, and then, in, like, end of 2002, Matt announced that Joe was going to stop doing the cartoon, and they wanted to find a new person, so they did a little talent search, and I did a little one-panel thing for that, sent it in, and I got it. So then it's like, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> 17 17 years later, I'm still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's my story. Yeah. You're like, it's the, for anybody who's looking, so if you go to YouTube at youtube.com slash actune is the URL mm -hmm. on the site. And of course the links will be in the show notes. Good stuff. Right. FM slash ATU two slash 97. But, uh, December, 2002, do we keep the boom chas as the, your first yeah. inaugural is that, that was, you said like your job application kind of, or, yeah, that or was my whatever. tryout. Yeah. That was my tryout. Just a little like one panel thing. And, uh, I, I kind of changed my style to something more realistic with the next one. Um, but yeah, I felt like I only had maybe a day to put this together. So I, I really worked hard, blew my Sunday and <laughs> gave that to Matt. Yeah. Cause it is an interesting look just seeing like the, you know, even that first progression of like, man, you were doing them like January, right. February, March, April, every like monthly back yeah. then. That's like for a number of nuts. years. That's <laughs> It's a lot. Um, it was. <laughs> I can't even do Again, a podcast. I didn't know a month, what I was like... getting myself into. <laughs> it, 
I thought, okay, one picture a month, doable. And then I just started getting these ideas to make multi-click, multi-panel things. It stopped being a cartoon and it started to be more like a graphic novel at times. And yeah, that just ate up entire weekends, nights after school. I was a teacher uh, for 17 years. And um, yeah, it, it was a real time suck. (laughs) <laughs> and for no pay. <laughs> Just lots of glory, but, uh, right? <laughs> lots of glory. <laughs> but it was neat to have an audience for something this crazy. And there, there is an audience, apparently. So yeah, does it, it. does it kind of parallel? I don't know your entire history. We can sort of get started at maybe back at the beginning mm-hmm. of getting into art. But even as your, your own career as an artist, does it kind of parallel your journey as, you know, finding yourself through the U2, me- like the medium of drawing U2, and then your own other artwork, or was it one sort of yeah. at different times? Was it happening? Well, I became a fan um, in like the early mid eighties. Eighty three was when cable TV came to my town, <laughs> and I saw them on this depressing barge, you know, and kind of hopping <laughs> one foot to the other. And uh, I wasn't a huge U two fan until the Joshua Tree uh, because they. Visually, they just didn't have it for me. I was really starting to learn how to draw when I was a teenager in the early 80s. And yeah, YouTube's videos were not Duran Duran. They weren't like (laughs) David Bowie and they weren't Prince. So I was aware of their work. (laughs) But when the Joshua Tree hit, they became like right here with Prince even. And uh, became kind of my band of choice throughout the nineties. Um, I I'm curious an art just to sort of interject there for that. Like the, was the Joshua tree as much like the, I said, I would say they're visually, they didn't really up their game a whole bunch with Joshua tree, but was it just the music was just like, okay, this is actually really good as well. And uh, hopefully they'll get yeah. there visually. <laughs> Actually, I think they upped their game visually. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get past the hair for a long time. You know, like 1983 through about 1986 was a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once Bono grew it out into like a page boy, that was much better. And I, I think they really started to care a little bit more about their videos. Right. But for what it's worth, the music, it hit senior year of high school. It was just a perfect storm. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you got in, you were into art at that time as well, or like finding yourself as an artist and and what was your journey on the, on your personal art side, I guess, of. Well, I've, I've always drawn as like a real little kid and uh, kind of, Uh, a geek girl in school I got excellent grades and art was kind of this thing that I also did that never counted towards my GPA (laughs) but I loved it so much and I uh, as as a senior I had kind of a choice of whether to like be a math major or an art major and I became an art major Um, yeah it was just something magic about being able to make something out of nothing mm-hmm. and i i could do math but i didn't love to do math and was there like family influence there like parent your were your parents artists or was it just kind of like this new path that you blazed in the i was the a, family? i blazed a new path <laughs> um, but like i come from a family of obsessives like my dad will obsess about golf and computers and you know fishing whatever is his thing my sister is obsessed with makeup and she has a YouTube empire built on yeah. that. We, we get obsessed and whatever we decide to focus on, I, I think we all just sort of understand that that's going to be our thing and stay out of the way. So they encouraged me as, as an art student and then an art teacher. Um, that was sort of how I made my living as an independent woman throughout right. my adult life. Um, but yeah, yeah, no regrets being yeah. an artist. And that is, so teaching kind of is the, or that's one path, obviously, in mm-hmm. terms of staying connected with the art world without having to like suddenly have your livelihood and your income depend on what art you're producing, selling, 
much. I really exactly. Assume. It's just really, really hard to make any kind of living as an artist. And I come from a working class background. My dad was a teacher, sort of in my blood. And I, I felt like I needed to support myself. And uh, there was there was nobody coming by saying, hey, I will support you and you can do <laughs> your art. So uh, yeah, that was the cool art teacher in the 90s and the 2000s that maybe some of you may have had. <laughs> I like my job a lot. Into the music and into bands and, and mm -hmm. that side of it, not just, yeah, like the high school kids. It was it high school that you taught? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I taught at two different high schools right. in Illinois. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so when when uh, you two came along, obviously late 80s, um, did you start drawing them and doing, like, did they intersect into your art you know before uh, obviously at you too and all that stuff but like was it sort of there as a way of expressing your fandom or love for the band i guess not, we would call it fandom back then really. but. <laughs> i um when i went to college i had artistic control over the arts and entertainment supplement of our college newspaper which was fantastic, but this was going on when you two were in a dormant period, so there wasn't really any need to cover them because they were doing nothing right. in 1990. <laughs> but I did, I did have to draw just like a little illustration of them once, and it was cute, but it was just kind of a throwaway thing. Um, I, I really didn't get back into drawing them until this at you two thing popped up. Right. And was it, yeah. was music in general as part of it or was it all like, kind of like art was this other world and music was just kind of the thing you listened to maybe while you did art or was, did you, did it intersect there? Uh, I mean, I, I was inspired by music. I, I, a lot of musicians are just my personal heroes, you no. know, artistically or not. And, and so, yeah, I, I think when you live by yourself, you have music going on at all times <laughs> in the background. And I was one of those people. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did influence me, but not into my visual art, really. Right. So, in going back to like when you started with that, you two in two thousand two. That's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of twos going on here. But uh, what what kind of things were you hoping to draw and or paint? I guess, and what what were was there sort of mandate? I don't. I wasn't involved obviously back then with that you two, but it was kind of like you were you given free reign to just like take whatever happened to be in the news and kind of like filter yeah. that through a painting, or was it kind of like they wanted? something specific from you with, with the draw, the paintings? Um, no, it was just free reign, whatever you're going to come up with. And right. I tried to make them funny. I tried to keep them current. And that was a sort of active phase for you two. You know, 2002, beginning of 2003, uh, they were coming off elevation. There were plenty of photos for me to look at and, you know, get inspired by. And, uh, I don't know. I just had a bunch of ideas in the beginning. It was, you know, very, very fresh material. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to do lots of cartoons about them when they are not doing anything when, when they're in like this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, this fall they'll, they'll have the tour again and I'll, I'll figure out something to do with that. But, but yeah, the, the early years, it was all about when's the next album coming out or like you'll see a picture of Bono at some economic forum and okay, maybe I can make something out of that. I did try to stay current, but other than that, it was just, you do the cartoon, whatever that's right. going to be, you know? And uh, looking through the, the archives, there's some, like you sort of mentioned earlier a bit, like trying different mediums almost like obviously painting being mm -hmm. your primary one, but right. um, I just happened to click on like little U2 in 3d, which is like a yeah. claymation or uh -huh. I guess, I don't know if that's claymation. It's just a single frame, but like out of clay. Right. I guess. Yeah. Right. Um, any other sort of things that you remember as far as different mediums you tried or, or how yeah. you worked trying to get U2 into different mediums, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it was, during one of the desperate years where I couldn't think of anything else to do. I, I one summer I did U2 in bad taste. So I did like Larry as a uh, paint by number. I made an edge out of pantyhose. It was just like a known sculpture medium for like people make dolls out of pantyhose. So I made an edge. Um, what else? Uh, I, I made them out of food. I made Larry out of a steak. <laughs> I made an Adam or 
Yeah, Adam was mashed potatoes, I believe. Macaroni. Macaroni, that too. That's the one I I have that. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, like there's this, I'm looking through the archive and all of a sudden there's this (laughs) macaroni picture of Adam and it's like very, if you look at the picture, I mean, even if, yeah, if you didn't know it, someone just held it up, like it's very clearly it's Adam, but it's all, all macaroni, I think it looks like. All food. It was young Adam, and it's like seeds and different kinds of pasta that I glued <laughs> onto a piece of cardboard. <laughs> and, you know, like, like this was an old school picture of Adam when he had the curly afro. And so that was like rotini pasta, like yeah. little spirals. <laughs> that It was perfect. It yeah. was really fun. <laughs> but, yeah, sometimes when I can't think of anything else to do, I'll, I'll turn them into voodoo dolls. I'll you know, just, just go nuts with whatever medium I can think of. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's one other one that I don't know the context for this either. Um, it's a, it's a painting, but Larry with a big, uh, unicorn and a rainbow behind or sunset sunrise. That was the paint by number. I just bought a regular paint by number at a store. And then I put Larry in with (laughs) (laughs) the unicorn and stuff. So yeah, it was, it's pretty good because you never know these like with youtube fandom and people out there obviously mm-hmm. this being the internet it, i wasn't sure if it was like a commissioned piece by somebody who's like i need to have larry in front you of know, a unicorn i wouldn't be surprised yeah I, I, he probably wouldn't have as much of a shirt on if that was the request maybe right, this is right. the one issue but <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and there's another one that's uh we won't go through because obviously podcasting <clears throat> and even on the video version that we'll have if there is one but the yeah. it's a hard medium to talk about a picture <laughs> but sure. uh, we'll have links to them in the show notes but so you can check them out but there's one i noticed um and again i don't remember when this happened exactly in the, in terms of like my whether i was involved at you at youtube then or not but yeah. there's sort of a juxtaposition of modern ish bono with rattle and hum era edge and yeah and like bono is very colorful and vibrant and edge mm-hmm. is more muted yeah that was um, me trying to figure out what they were going to do with the Joshua Tree 2017 tour, mm. you know, just like predictions. And so I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have like holograms of young U2 sharing the stage with present day U2? And so that was present day Bono and old school Edge is kind of like this blue flickery type of image. with yeah. him. So that's what that was. Yeah, that's actually that's brilliant actually it almost makes me wish, wish they would they have done something that. like that just for like because you can you can totally see like the what was a zoo tv era when he like waves back at you know the yes. streets have no name bono i think it was or with or without you bono i forget which one but um you know talking to him or whatever almost as a totally. choreographed yeah. kind of moment but and wouldn't put it past them just to like want to get into them. but i guess they weren't paying attention at that time to that painting or something and they totally have missed. the technology i'm yeah, sure exactly <laughs> Like well, that mind. totally was the year of like, yeah, who was it? I was like playing at Coachella or whatever as a hologram or whatever and that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll listen to this and they'll resurrect it as an idea for uh-huh. this tour that's coming up, the Josh Tree Tour again. So, we'll see. Well, something different for everybody in Australia and Asia, yeah. I think. Yeah, same. <laughs> All the other tours they didn't get to see, they could do holograms. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, and recently, uh, it was your artwork was featured in an, ex- is it an exhibit or a permanent part of U2 basically, right? Like t- tell a story, I guess, for folks who maybe haven't followed on the site, what, yeah. how this all came down. Well, it's actually, I'm in a couple of museums now for this geeky stuff that I do. Um, one is um, the Illinois State Museum, which is in Springfield, Illinois, and they have like a Chicago branch. They're showing uh, an exhibition called Rocked and Rolled, where they take classic rock inspired art and they pair it with fossils and minerals and gemstones <laughs> and stuff, just as like a play on these bands or fossils. Um, so I have three of my YouTube paintings are part of that and it's on display right now in Chicago land and uh, November it'll be in Springfield. So that was incredible and nice. finally validated me as like this geek U2 artist just been toiling in obscurity for <laughs> 15, 17 years. Um, but then um, 
some of my uh, YouTube friends were like telling me, you know, really try this year and see if you can get in the Little Museum of Dublin in their U2 room. <sighs> and I, I hate to do that kind of stuff. I hate to ask for things. But um, at U2 Zone, Scott Calhoun kind of is part of like a curator of that room. And so I reached out to him and said, you know, could, could we maybe see if all these thousands of like watercolor paintings that I do, you know, could, could maybe some of them find a home somewhere in, in that YouTube room. And it took a while. It took a few months of just lots of emails back and forth, but I ended up giving a couple of my paintings to uh, the little museum of Dublin and they are currently framed and hanging in the YouTube room as of like last month. So that was a thrill and a half. And no kidding. That's U2 town. Yeah. My work is in U2 town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And yeah, yeah, again, we'll have links in the show notes. So people, if you happen to be going to Ireland anytime soon, do you know how long it, is it like a permanent part of the exhibit or is it like sort of a seasonal thing or do you know? It's permanent. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. to be part of a permanent collection is a big deal for any artist. So this is a huge thing for me. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have links to obviously to find that where it is so that yeah. on your next journey to Dublin, have you been, have you, you probably haven't been there since it's been. There, there's, there, I've been lobbying for Jeff and I to go back to Dublin. <laughs> I'm, I'm chipping away at it. But yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be job one to actually see where they ended up. Yeah. It's like an edge picture and edge and Adam together. Nice. Uh, just a couple of 11 by 14 watercolors that I did. And you, you, you said something earlier, like the, that it's like a big deal to be in uh, part of an exhibit or part out, mm -hmm. you know, almost in the real world. Well, not almost in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously that I understand that, but is there a difference between like sort of, you know, your tangible real in the flesh or in the paper <laughs> canvas artwork mm -hmm. And the digital version that like, is there sort of like a, yeah. I don't know, like I liken it to like, you know, an artist putting, playing their music maybe in, in a studio versus like hearing it in a stadium or something like that. And yeah. kind of like that digital online recognition and real world, which has, yeah, it's kind of two different mm -hmm. realms, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a big art history fan. I have all these art history books where you see, you know, a Van Gogh or something and it's shrunk down to two or three inches tall maybe black and white in an art history book. And you can appreciate that. You can appreciate like a painting that somebody's done shrunk down little on a screen that you see. Um, and you can zoom in and see details and stuff. But, you know, to see that Van Gogh for real in front of you in a museum, like, I mean, it's just like seeing a rock star. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to equate mine with that, but people always tell me, you know, it's, it's amazing to see the real thing, you know, and it's, it's kind of a treat for them. And I have so many of them, I guess I take it for granted that, you know, like here's a little edge that I painted and I, it's going to be hard to focus it. But, um, yeah, yeah I, I have this just in stacks in file cabinets <laughs> taking up space, <laughs> but people do enjoy seeing them for real. Yeah. I remember you had an exhibit, uh, uh, or whatever it's called, I guess, at the mm -hmm. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah. thing in Cleveland that year. Then when we had the U two, yeah, get that together was there. amazing. That yeah, was so so cool. Um, so for for folks, just while we're thinking about it right now, and we'll mm -hmm. cover it at the end too. But like the work, if if I want to buy one of your prints, mm -hmm. where can I do that? Um, do well, that? it's it's a website called Image Kind. I am. A G E K I N D, and you can just like search for Kelly Eddington, or probably just search for U2, and you'll find all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably one of the few U2 artists out there, but um, yeah, or you could go to kellyeddington.com, and I have links to everything that I do. You can kind of look through a gallery of my U2 stuff as well. Yeah, and it's what's cool, I think, on there is they, yeah, you can obviously order prints of what what you've done looks like there is other mm -hmm. a few other youtube related things on there so you might want to just narrow it to kelly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just <Okay>. looking by <laughs> if you want the quality stuff anyways no offense unless someone's listening, no substitute. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> um the uh i was going to ask you some just some a quick questions i guess before 
uh, we wrap up it, and but uh, we want to also get to. I want to get to the, some of the ask at you two questions. So if you're listening and you want to send in questions for the future episode or have feedback on a previous episode, if you use Twitter and uh, want to send us a tweet at, using hashtag ask at you two, uh, we'll grab that and catch it for the next episode. So uh, at Kevin S T U asked if you could paint you two in venues they have played, which would you choose? Um, is the venue really honestly is it, hard it to doesn't like, matter to me yeah I, I don't find them that interesting most of the time you know when i am painting a concert situation the background is dark or the background is smoke you know and mm-hmm. whatever but having said that i've, I've painted wembley hated it <laughs> painted <laughs> slain you know a couple times it was okay but it was mostly dark um, I've done little sketches of the Apollo, which I got to go to, and that was kind of fun because it was just different and small and kind of ornate. Um, but I guess, you know, it's it's got to be interesting, like, say, Red Rocks. That has a natural element that was mm-hmm. would be cool to paint. Otherwise, I don't want to paint seats and, you know... <sighs> banner ads and you know different levels it's just that's just a lot of work yeah so i don't care <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. would avoid it at all costs if i can i imagine it's kind of like i know in like uh poor analogy but like computer games and stuff they often little like back in the day anyways if there's a crowd shot or like a say a sports game yep. like the crowd shot would just be like one person copy and paste it obviously throughout the crowd because <laughs> who wants to spend yeah. the time to like try and, and yeah just having to Right. There, there's a lot of little shorthand things that you can do when you draw and paint, you know, to make a crowd and just like a circle and maybe like a stick coming up with a hand on it, you know, and just layer them. But it's it's tedious and, and I don't like to do it, but I, I will do it. Um, I did a crowd. of. Um, well, I was noticing while you're looking at that. Here, yeah. Yeah. This is my crowd of cell phones and Bono is like this T-Rex. Dynast- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, but so, is that you God, as the one? I hated doing that. I, I hated this part. <laughs> is that you as the one actual crowd person? Yes, or I'm, the... I'm the one person without the phone. I, I never oh, take yeah. pictures nice. myself yeah. because they, they never come out great, and they're <laughs> they're better people doing that than me. Nice. Yeah. The uh, um, I, there's one that you did of um, Edge walking. I think it's when like the Pride Walk, maybe where yes. you've got his security guy beside him or whatever. And there's a couple of people like very clearly painted and then, and recognizable as, as a YouTube fan, you may have seen a lot of the videos or their live streams or whatever, you know, attention to detail of like, yeah, the same, the right people are there, but obviously the crowd kind of just blends (laughs) from there. Yeah. You you don't see really individual faces that much, at least, you know, if you want to focus on edge, make him the star of the picture and not worry about 500 other little people. Yeah. (laughs) Um, that one actually is in the little museum of Dublin. Oh, that's one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, That's a great one. And do you have, uh, just any idea whether the band has seen your artwork? That's always like a Uh, thing that. Yes, actually. Um, this was at the beginning of the, uh, E and I tour in, um, Tulsa. I wasn't able to go to that, but Sherry from at U2, um, was putting together a little fan, gathering party it's just like i i would love it if you could make a thing for me to give out as like a party favor like a little postcard or something and i was like yeah okay i'll do it you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then i go okay i'll do it but only if you get bono to sign it for me ha ha i'll do it so i did it and uh she actually got him to sign it <laughs> of course she me. did yeah <laughs> she she like went right ahead and I have it here. I, I don't take it out of its protective sleeve. Nice. But this, this to me is like a throwaway piece of art that I did for Sherry as a personal favor. Not that anybody would say it, but Bono saw it. He signed it. He spent some time with it. He uh, said it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she like mailed this to me along with the Sharpie that he used, which I do treasure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. For anybody who's, who, if you can't see, it's the, I think, um, I saw it in the list, I think. Is it, it's yeah. part of, act. yeah. Um, I it... don't think it ever was part of my cartoons. Oh, okay. Um, um, 
But it's it's yeah, Bono looking through the other end of the telescope. He's like sitting on the surface of the moon and he's looking at Earth. And I, I, kind of a cartoony version of Bono. Just just I started to change the way I drew the cartoon version of him to give him some more wrinkles and you know glasses and you know his little black uniform that he wears all the time now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um at at adam's kimono asked when are you going to paint me with my blueprint and pink stars kelly yeah that's a good question i, I kind of had the opportunity to do that in the spring but i dropped the ball i uh, had to put adam in, in an art museum and he was wearing that coat i don't know if anybody remembers it but it's a beautiful long coat that has asia and australia appliques on the bottom of the coat (laughs) that is a great coat to paint so yeah one day if 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 it comes up i I do promise i will do the kimono if he's still wearing it i I have to imagine yeah (laughs) he's got i'm sure he's got some he he may be listening and he can send send a picture of the kimono to you that would be great so to to help with the next painting (laughs) i need reference material yeah exactly it's only right only fair that he would do that (laughs) Uh, yeah. At the Crave Case asks, what's the best piece of art-related advice you've been given? So, oh, I imagine over the well, years, it's hard to distill that down, maybe, but. Well, it's kind of the negative comments that I would get, like criticisms that I would get as an art student that just have stayed with me for my entire life. I don't, I don't know if you, Chris, you get comments on your, you know, podcasts and stuff, and you get a lot of nice stuff, but the negative stuff will oh, yeah. just be a thorn in your side forever um one time one of my professors said you're not a colorist like like i do a lot of monochromatic black and white stuff and i i'm just not brave enough to be a colorist and so darn it i'm a colorist now (laughs) (laughs) another time i like was kind of hurrying through a hand on some life drawing i was doing and um the guy said those fingers look like sausages (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, no. <sighs> and so now every hand I do, I really pay attention to every little knuckle and stuff. So, so those those negative pieces of art advice have made me a better artist, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for the most part, I do have a good quote that I go to all the time when people ask me art advice, and it's by Nick Cave. Um, And he goes, inspiration is a word used by people who aren't really doing anything. I go into my office every day that I'm in Brighton and I work. Uh, Whether I feel like it or not is irrelevant. Inspiration is nice, but if you only work when it strikes, you're going to be an unhappy artist. This is especially true if you want to earn a living at it. You don't hear about surgeons getting surgeon's block or garbage men getting garbage men's block. There are assuredly days when the surgeon doesn't want to be removing gallbladders, but she does it anyway because that's her job. And so whenever I feel like, oh, I'm not inspired to paint, it's like, you don't have to be, you know, just just yeah. do it anyway. It's your job. That's that's brilliant, actually. That's something that uh, I know I see a lot of in, even in the podcasting space or creative on the web, like programmers even are like, oh, I'm yeah. not in the right frame of mind to write code right now or whatever and like yeah i often i know i struggle with that too like uh i don't, I don't have anything to say yeah. so i'm not gonna record so i'll just not do it but yeah like seeing it more as a job which i think probably in the art world i would guess there's sort of a bristling against that idea that it's a job and it should be like it'll just flow out of you magically kind of <laughs> there there are some mystical people who yeah well, the spirit strikes them and then they can create art but I want to make some money at it. And if I <laughs> just wait for every fifth Wednesday, I have an idea. Yeah, it's exactly. not going to happen for me. <laughs> and I'm not you too. I, I can't afford to wait for God to walk through. The right. earth, you know? <laughs> well, I think even they, to a, uh, to a certain extent, they, you know, as they, I think they do it when they're promoting an album or whatever, the mythology of, yeah. of yeah. how a song comes together gets romanticized so much and obviously as fans we do do it a lot too because you read some of the accounts from you know whether they're all true or not who knows but the producers or people who are involved and sometimes it's just like grunt work like you just got to show up day after day try different things out spending Mm -hmm. 
doesn't sound like torture to me, but spending, you know, eight hours in the studio with Bono writing some yeah. lyric and noodling on guitar. And um, that's where, you know, it seems like maybe Adam and, and Larry have the better job of just like, they get to go <laughs> wait for the, <laughs> wait for it to get to 70% maybe sure. or whatever. <laughs> but well, uh, I, I'm a real detail person when I paint and I have so much respect for Edge the way, you know, he must just minutely change little settings from, you know, one thing to the next. Mm-hmm. And the way he must put a song together, it kind of reminds me of the minutia I have to deal with when I paint. Yeah, and well, he's got kind that of thing you don't appreciate probably yeah. unless you actually do it yourself too. Because there's so many variables for him too, as a in his mm-hmm. his what's the word uh, tableau? Or no, is that the, I don't know if that's the right word, but like the the tools he's using is I guess what I'm after. Like from the yeah. how much he dials in the effects pedal one way right. or the other, treble, and then the amp that he uses, the guitar he uses, even the chord. I'm sure he obsesses over and the pick he uses and all that kind of stuff. It's just like oh, yeah. so many variables from just strumming a guitar that he's dealing with and figuring out and one might be better than the other. And I'm worrying that he's missing like the one thing that'll make it sound just like a hundred percent instead of 99. Exactly. And documenting every little thing too, probably who yeah. knows what it does, but yeah. it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. So of the four, just about going mm-hmm. back to some U2 things, some rapid fire yes. U2 questions before we end, Jeez. what of the four, who is the most difficult to paint? Bono hundred percent every time. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is that, do you think? Okay, okay. As he has aged, his uh, coloring has become more subtle. Like, they're hard colors to Mm. mix, his eyebrows. Um, You can't just paint his skin. You got to paint the wrinkles. And then you got to paint the stubble on top. And some of that stubble is white. And some of it's darker. And you can't just paint his eyes. They've got to be behind glass and the glass is reflecting stuff, and you got to paint that too. Uh, his hair is always changing; it's always in a state of flux. So <laughs> it's like if, if he's my Charlie Brown, my Charlie Brown is changing his whole look all the time, and I just have to adapt to it. Yeah. So he's tough, but he's the most rewarding. Like if I nail a Bono, it's like the best feeling. Right. Yeah. Cause that's what like, just, I, I have never, I mean, I obviously have drawn and tried, you know, my hand at doing stuff over the years, uh-huh. but like the idea of like, I don't know, you've painted Adam, let's, uh, you know, if it's a painting of the four of them, you painted the three and then you have to get yeah. to Bono, let's say, or whatever. And you're like, screw up the <sighs> eye on Bono or whatever. And then like, does it all, is it just garbage or do it's, you, it's really hard there's to no undo. watercolor. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to undo. If there's something that maybe I could do digitally, Mm. You know, and it's not going to affect the painting or anything too much. I I might do that, but I'm working small. I I have, you know, 11 by 14 is kind of my limit um, for my scanner to deal with. So if I paint all four of them full body on one piece of paper, those are tiny little faces, you Mm. know, like the size of a quarter or a dime or something. So that's really hard. That's why I rarely do it. Um, I love doing a portrait where it's, it's head shoulders or, you know, yeah. something a little bit bigger. Yeah. Cause yeah. The, what's the biggest, um, canvas, I guess that you have ever done you two on. Do you know? Uh, let's see. I got to say, I, I'm pretty disciplined at like 11 by 14. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For otherwise practical reasons I and have otherwise. to go to like a different town to scan them and I'm, right. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about okay, going to edge then what's uh, some of the fa- do you, I don't know if you it looks like over the years you you definitely pick up on his as a guitar nerd myself you pick up on the guitar changing you're not always using the same guitar you've, you know even though most people could not wouldn't necessarily notice but like is there a favorite kind of guitar that he's used uh, that over the years that you like to paint versus the other ones um, yeah I, I think he has a Rickenbacker that I love the shape of mm-hmm. um, that's beautiful but um I think it, I'm pretty sure it has like a dark neck with white strings that are on top of that. And as a watercolor painter, that's really hard to paint around everything. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love anytime he has like a white or a light colored guitar because then the stage lights will cast shadows on it, make cool color things happen to it. Um, black guitars aren't that much fun for me. Yeah. Uh, 
But Edge in general, he's the easiest one of the four to paint um, because he looks like nobody else on the planet except for his children, I guess. (laughs) But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's he has this really elegant face, these cheekbones, um, just intelligent, very small eyes. Don't have to worry about painting hair with him. I mean, the only <laughs> thing that is like a speed bump with him is if he has like ribs in the cap, you know, oh, and I have yeah. to paint like the ribs <laughs> yeah. individually. Um, and re- the only thing that I absolutely could not stand last year uh, were, this is Edge, his pants with these like ripped things oh, yeah. on. And there's like studs and little pictures of the band inside the pants, which I had to paint. (laughs) But other than, and oh, also, if I may, I hated this guitar strap. This was so much work. Oh, yeah. Totally. (laughs) But yeah. So if you had a message to get to like his wardrobe assistant for the next tour, it'd be like. (laughs) Please, just like a, a black guitar strap would be awesome. <laughs> Something plain or a color. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, the, the pants were outrageous. They, nice. they were cool, but I hated painting them every time. <laughs> and that's where, that's one of those things where like 10% of the people looking at the painting are like, at, at least initially, like their first glance, mm-hmm. wouldn't notice if you didn't do it, but it's that attention to detail. I think that draws yeah. people into that next level of like, oh, wow, oh, she actually got the like, the way he the kind of pants he wears and like the right, the right shirt right. that he has or whatever. And yeah, very and, up. And they are cool looking. They, they are important yeah, just to, not for to, to actually document them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I love painting him. He's my, he's my favorite. How about uh, going back to Bono for a second, the favorite mm-hmm. era of his, like he changed his glasses a lot. Is there like a certain era that's easier or harder than others to paint or style <sighs> that he wears? Yeah. I mean, I kind of, have a love hate relationship with these current round glasses. They're the easiest to paint, but I don't really like them on him as much, but I think they're corrective lenses. Do you know Mm. this? I feel like they're here to stay. So (laughs) I've made my peace with them. Um, There are certain styles of glasses that are tougher than others. I love it when he wears a blue lens um, rather than an orange lens. It was just artistically the orange of the lens over his blue eyes makes his blue eyes not look blue anymore. And why right. would you do that? You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about, uh, I know there's a Larry, uh, Larry's shirt, I think is a one Twitter account, but like Larry's shirt stylings, which probably don't change all that much, but is there like a V neck, the c- closed up to the top, the <laughs> just for the Larry I, fans I out really, there. Yeah. The, Larry almost always has an open neck, which is cool. Um, and like kind of high sleeves, high short sleeves. So you can see his arms, which are amazing to paint. Um, he's, he's got a fantastic face that is always beautiful and beautiful people are difficult to paint because there's just not much to get wrong. You know, there, there's nothing that really makes them look outstandingly different it's really hard to to pin down um but he has kind of a big nose if you've ever really looked at Larry's nose it's a little big so that's what I cling to everything comes from that so if they had gone like a Bono quoted you know we should have got a Ringo that would have been actually more interesting (laughs) for you painting wise is actually have a Ringo he's got a beautiful mouth too there you go Go Larry. You know, I don't know how he does it, but he's, he's aged magnificently. Yeah. It's just a challenge. I think it's me. the bull's blood or something that, I it's don't know. the bull's blood. <laughs> how about, uh, we touched on it with the, the pasta earlier, but the favorite era of Adam's hair. Current. That. Current? Current. Like, not like casual walking around Adam, but in concert Adam where it's all kind of up. Yeah as incredible hair to paint um when you're a watercolor painter the white of the paper is your white you don't have white paint so if you're painting something that's already white it's so easy it just adds some of the color into it and it's a great shape i, I think he looks fantastic yeah i have to you know i guess you don't have one in the works of his uh his like 
um, bearded, the one that with his his kids and at the protest or whatever. But like, it's like, who is this guy? All of a sudden, it's like, oh, it's, it's Adam. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if they travel with their like hair people or anything, but I, I think he's on his own. Yeah, <laughs> he just lets it be. Yeah, but I, I hope this tour, you know, just take that and bring it up because it makes such a fun profile. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting if they do some, you know, photo shoots and or videos or whatever from this tour when they're in a, like uh, Kevin asked earlier about the venues, but like when they're, you know, if they're in India and they have a photo, like they've never, to my knowledge, done any sort of like, they, well, obviously they haven't done like sort of the journey, like the Beatles or whatever, right, into right. mystic music or whatever. And who knows if we'll ever hear a, um, what's the music instrument, the big like. Oh, like a now. sitar? Yeah, a sitar or something yeah. <laughs> in a oh, song can like you that. imagine? Um, <laughs> other than remix, I think I can hear one in my head, but I can't picture what song it is. Like uh, by Elevation. That yes, gets, yes. That's like yeah. sort of the digital uh, sitar maybe is what's in there. But um, but yeah, well, it could be interesting to see what kind of photos and, and video stuff we get from there that might inspire a future Kelly Eddington artwork. Oh, art piece. yeah. I'm, I'm totally looking forward to it. And I hope they change it up a little bit visually just just – to have some different stuff to paint. Yeah. I'm so sure if, they will. If, um, so if someone's interested in getting into watercolor painting mm -hmm. or just painting in general, I guess, and, and you know, obviously you two fans listen to this podcast, so they have obviously a connection there, but like what, where should someone start? What's the, like, I, I'm mildly interested in drawing or, or uh -huh. painting. How do I get started with expressing my YouTube fandom through that medium? Yeah. That's where the teacher it's Kelly really has to come hard. back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to just jump right into watercolor and feel like you're going to be great at it right out of the box. It's a really challenging medium that it's taken me about 30 years to feel like I've got a hold of it. But, um, I mean, I've made some instructional watercolor pads mm -hmm. of paper and I have videos that you can watch that show my process. And it's basically... You start with a good drawing. If, if you know how to draw, you're probably going to know how to paint if you have the patience for it. And I think a lot of people learn art these days, maybe not in school. Maybe it's it's not offered in, like, say, high school or even colleges. Some of them are dropping art programs. Um, but I think you can learn a lot online. And just, just by watching other people do it, I, I, I feel like I have kind of a global classroom that you, anybody is is welcome to jump on when you uh, go to my YouTube channel. Yeah, that's um, youtube.com slash, uh, there's probably other ways to get youtube.com slash yeah. user slash P-U-P-E-D-D. -D -D, yeah, Pub is, a, Ed is, Pub is Ed. just a nickname. Yeah. yeah. Or just, just go to <laughs> Kelly Eddington Watercolors is the name of my channel. There you go. And yeah, I've got... That's crazily enough i've got almost a quarter of a million subscribers on there and i come from a town of 1200 people <laughs> so it's insane to me i know isn't the, the internet is awesome yeah that way. yeah mm -hmm. yeah definitely if, if you haven't ever like ventured beyond maybe you've you're listening to this because you you know who kelly is and you've you love her artwork for at u2.com but maybe vent, haven't ever ventured beyond that to see some of her other work and like the on her mm -hmm. homepage on, on the YouTube channel anyways, right away, right now is like a, there's a Fred, Freddie Mercury speed painting that is yeah. like just crazy to watch and see how it all comes to life and, wow. um, and see all the, like, yeah, just to check out all the, the ways, like she said, tutorial videos and kind of like how to's, and then also mm -hmm. just throw it on your TV and watch this amazing artwork come to life in front of you. Yeah. There's the Bono one I see yeah. from a couple of years ago. Um, that you can do. And, um, I, and if you follow her on, uh, Instagram, I think is where you're posting it. I'm trying to remember now, like, uh, your Instagram.com slash Kelly Eddington, I think on there. Yeah. So, right. Mm -hmm. You're doing a painting of, or in progress of Jeff, right? Yeah. I just finished him and now I'm doing another painting of me painting that painting. It's, Whoa. it's kind of meta. meta. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. But I'm, it's a self-portrait. Um, I turned 50 this year, and so I thought 50 is a good time to do a self-portrait. Nice. The last one, major one, was at 35, so maybe every 15 years I'll do a biggie, and this is one of them. Yeah, but that's – it's. I've met Jeff once in my life, so I can at least say that mm -hmm. there's a more than a passing resemblance to him. And the, Thank the, you. Uh, I have like that 
almost that exact red shirt, I think, from, well, not Everybody exactly, but, did. yeah, like, it's, it's like, from Target. It's is it, okay, up here is, like, I think it was an old Navy <laughs> one, but it's similar to, I, the, yeah, anyways, of like, yeah. uh, Canada has lots of plaid, so, <laughs> but uh, I was like, that's, it's a crazy attention to detail and amazingly Thank well you. done. And uh, yeah, so you should definitely go check all of those things out beyond her YouTube stuff, which is awesome in and in of itself. Um, anything else I'm forgetting as far as where to find you? Um, it's at Kelly Eddington at pretty uh-huh. much every place, you know, and yeah, check me out. Instagram really is the best place to see my artwork and, you know, follow my cat too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for coming on the podcast and talking. 